how the whole concrete block was developed in the process itself. So as you know, after the Gorkha earthquake, the hollow concrete block it emerged as a, one of the a major building typology in 32 districts. Uh, before that, it was limited only as a very temporary safe culture, not as a house. Uh, and uh, it is estimated that more than 3,000 hollow concrete blocks uh, uh, they are in 32 districts, but it's very uh, mostly they are prevalent in Kaski, Nuapur, Makwanpur, Senduli, and Dali. Uh, it's very difficult to estimate the actual uh, number because the CVS uh, assessment, the damage assessment survey, they put uh, this hollow concrete uh, block in another category, so it's very difficult to. Uh, really find out the actual uh, number in that one. So, so after um, to see what, like we have uh, all tests and standards for brick and this thing, but nothing as such in the hollow concrete, uh, hollow concrete block. So HRP did two round of uh, uh, collection uh, in November, um, in November, December and 2017. And this is the result of that one. So we, at that time, we, we conducted 110 blocks over 50 suppliers and 78% they were below the Nepali, Nepali standards. So, so there was a need of like uh, to do something on the buildings that are coming up after the earthquake. So if, if this is available in our website now also. So if you are interested, you can go into detail on, on that one part. So then like a technical group realizing the need of uh, standards and the manual and the guideline. A technical group was formed in 2018 July uh, to, uh, to, to develop this RCB. And in that group, there were the, from the representatives from the government side, CFL building and NRA itself. And they were from POs, particularly JICA, NSET, um, and will change uh, NRCS and HRRP was also there, but it was also doing a coordination of the technical working group. And within that uh, meeting, also a kind of framework of the content was developed, which included like the field study, uh, the computer modeling, um, and timeline, and many many other things. And it also defined the roles and responsibility of who is doing what. Uh, so, and the working station was set at NRA. So, this is the technical group working at that one, at NRA. And during uh, this laboratory test was another part of, uh, um, as one part of uh, that uh, developing process. Um, maybe Kubeji will discuss it later bit on, uh, on the technical session. Uh, so, it was done, the test was done in IOE. Uh, engineering uh, campus Kulcho. and the draft was uh, was a final draft was put here in December and it was circulated for peer review so it was sent to CMP within all the partner organizations uh, and uh, we got feedback and comments it was incorporated the feedbacks uh, the working group also incorporated uh, uh, those feedback and finally the working group presented uh, the, uh, the the draft of you know, hollow concrete block to the NRA standardization technical committee on January 24, 2019, uh, and at the time ultimately they were the ones they were the one to uh, uh, it's a manual uh, as an NRA document. So after that. The dissemination of NAB, it was uh, first it was it is available in NRA website itself and uh, there were more than 14 uh, number of HCB orientation in all the districts and we also integrated the HCB uh, session in one of the training uh, session uh, in uh, for as in TOT engineers uh, so and this is another uh, dissemination uh, strategy that this technical system is going to happen here, that's why we are here, here today. So this is our kind of brief 
how we develop uh, this um, SAV manual. Uh, so thank you for my part. Now I would like to request uh, Pude, uh, who was uh, the who was leading this coordination of that technical group, uh, to go more detail and present what is there in uh, this hollow concrete block. This thing. So in the meantime, uh, the project director of uh, uh, CNPI will be now Raji has already arrived, so we will have to do some here. Uh, namaste. Yeah. My name is Kuwait Rivete. I'm a structural engineer and I was working uh, in many technical working groups associated with NRA and CFI building. So here, uh, with less time, I, I'll try to you know, inform you about a bit technical things, what LCD manual has and uh, other things as well. Uh, so. My objective of today's presentation was to disseminate uh, the information, brief information of SCB, so some technical as well as uh, how we able to get this manual, like Gunsar Manual, uh, in, pre in our presentation, uh, presented glimpse of how the manual was developed, and similar was the exact process, the previous manuals from NRA was uh, uh, developed. So from survey part, we found many, uh, in the beginning there were piles pile in the DLPR and CLPI where concrete blocks were uh, filed, titled with a concrete block and there, was, uh, uh, there, there is no, uh, there is no technical inspection things or the uh, inspection seats so there were confusion whether it is uh, uh, technically okay or not, it is rather the technical people and our engineers write the dilemma to approve or the disapprove those files. So we selected as uh, we selected as uh, samples, representative samples of the uh, of the buildings where concrete block were used in both 32 districts and uh, managed to uh, get blocks from the uh, districts to the central central testing lab. So, and we 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 assess the quality or uh, quality of the blocks. So basically, we found the concrete blocks were used in many building typologies. Uh, like uh, the, these buildings are purely land load bearing structures. These are the uh, frame structures where the loading, uh, primary loading element are frames, beam and columns. So this is kind of mixed structures, some part of the lateral load and vertical is taken by frame, other are uh, SCV, hollow concrete blocks are just submitting in uh, uh, vertical as well as lateral. This is a bit more complex, where ground floor is a CV manual, SCV blocks, upper part is uh, like a CJ seat wrapped around the, uh, around the outer wall and there are of timber planks and other things. So it's a bit, a bit complicated to analyze what the structural system is, exactly is working. So this is another kind of structure. So these all are we gathered the information and managed to go some of the fields where we found there are uh, single story buildings with the CJ with light roof uh, in the top. So rooms are in a plan we, we found two room to four room where Passes are in, included or somewhere excluded, and the building we found one story mostly around 80 persons and above, so remaining are two stories. So, main issues, uh, structural point of view, are the quality of concrete blocks. The test showed around 70 persons were not meeting the Nepal standard, uh, Nepal standard requirements, we call it minimum requirements. So, having buildings with a uh, Non-compliant, uh, having non -com uh, use, use of non-compliant uh, quality in terms of unit or concrete block, mainly cause units fail during the loading, extreme loading. So we, we cannot predict how the building will collapse or the failure of your, uh, uh, propagate in the building. So it's like a, from damage rate, it's it's going to you know damage around four to five rate. So others are the building. Blood units are okay, but they are lacking seismic banding. In, in load bearing structures, the bandings are primary, 
which is mandatory. So we we we, we cannot find many of the, of these buildings. So the during the earthquake loading, structural uh, walls may collapse or there's a different kind of damages in such a, a wall. So other as initial structures, upper part may collapse or may slide. Uh, some other uh, damages may seem during the lateral loading. So these are the basic problems we enlisted from the uh, field visit, neurotal modeling, and other guide ref with reference to other standards, building standards. So manual came with this uh, title, part one to three. It says, uh, where the background are, why in this part, mainly the why manual is required and what are the technical limitations this manual has. Uh, and other part is uh, building typology. It's basically, uh, basically uh, as you take the engineers, uh, how they can inspect the, uh, inspect the building typology where the SCB, SCB blocks were used. Other are uh, how the SCB, uh, part in part three, how SCB uh, buildings works in loading, this tech, and what are the minimum requirements in different building typologies, it has these things. So other part four, the main part is the quality, it explains about the quality, the material quality, like a sand, cement, other things, while making the blocks, other are quality of the building itself during the construction of building units. Others are this, this part covers the main correction part, the design part. For the design, it refers to Nepal building stack code. It's, around, uh, it's like NBC 202 or 203 for the new building. But this part in, uh, highlights the, what are the correcting measures for the, those buildings which are not compliant. Other are ready to design. It's again the corrective measure, corrective, corrective designs. And uh, there are, uh, Five more annexes where there are one uh, first annex A explains the uh, gives you the idea how you can uh, uh, how you can uh, get the idea of the quality regarding, regarding quality of block that was used in the building not the stored one other is structural analysis how we uh, uh, did structural analysis while making this manual other is there is a question, there is a question, if you recommend some beneficiaries to, to do some kind of uh, corrections, they will ask you the, how much I have to spend. So there is a one Excel sheet where you can put the length, breadth, or uh, physical dimension, three or four, five uh, things in the Excel sheet, and at the end you will get the uh, full uh, intervention cost. So it's easier for the in, in, uh, inspector while uh, while suggesting the beneficiaries or other persons uh, to to ensure them to go for the corrections like he uh, suggested. Other are case studies, like there are different building typologies to select. Uh, there's uh, different building typologies. It's very difficult for engineers at the beginning to select appropriate inspection form. So there are the ten or twelve case studies where we are. So, this gives the engineers to select proper appropriate inspection seats from uh, from set of inspection seats uh, produced by the NRA. Others are inspection form where previously there were no inspection form, particularly in SCV load bearing structures. So this part incorporates this uh, inspection sheet. So making this uh, manual. Uh, the rationale behind making this uh, manual is uh, there's a huge number of buildings. Uh, previously, it was around 3,000, it's supposed to be now, it's uh, around 6,000 or even more. So, there's a gap like uh, no inspections, checklists, and in construction, many things. So, so uh, having not meeting the technical requirements, the beneficiaries can't get the substrate trans. So, basic things they have to fulfill the uh, seismic safety in, in any kind of building. So this manual ensures the, this kind of uh, safety, uh, getting this kind of safety. Uh, so again, it has limitations. We, we, this, manual, uh, this manual limits only for the load bearing structures, load bearing structures. Uh, there might be some other uh, uh, 
frame structures where I see you are used, this, this, uh, this manual doesn't uh, you know, use any idea regarding that kind of building typology. So it's uh, only for the good building structures where SCV were used. Uh, we, in, we, uh, it means Nepal, according to Nepal Building Code 2002, the, the category mentioned was C, so for the C. And that was the first part. In second part, uh, it's, uh, it, it gives you the how the inspection has to be done. Uh, so again, there is a solid in the, in the field. There is a solid and hollow concrete blocks. Technically, if the hollow blocks has uh, uh, more than seventy five percent solidness, it again falls under solid block category. So so there are two distinct uh, things. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, the, according to the field uh, survey, the, the dimension, physical dimensions of the build, uh, blocks were like uh, in length wise we found uh, 400 by uh, 400 by 200, 400, 200, sorry, height 200, and width thickness is 150 mostly. However, there is a practice of different uh, size of the blocks. So this. Uh, uh, this manual of the survey uh, worked on this this thickness. So uh, during the uh, during this uh, preparation of manual, we did many tests. We did many tests, and uh, we categorized the the result of the test according to Nepal standard one 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 nineteen, in which we those buildings in two, in two category one which has uh, Strength greater than 5 MPa and other which which are less than 5 MPa. In which the first set of blocks, the average of the strength was found 6.8 MPa, and the, the least block which the block which has least strength was 5.41. This classification, uh, statical classification, is, is occurring is meeting according to Nepal standard. If this difference is, is far, we, we cannot, you know, uh, uh, use, we, we cannot go for the design and calculation if this is really different, like 60% uh, or more according to Nepal standard. We, we can apply in two different uh, set of, two different set. And uh, again, so we, we, we made up some small wallet wall from this uh, set of blocks so we tested tested that uh, uh, wall so we found the strength of wall the lowest uh, this one and then average one MPA the, the, the there are three wallet the least strength the wall having is 0 0.78 so uh, so our interest is the what the wall has strength, not the block unit itself. So, so this gives uh, this encouragement us to go for the uh, relatively low cost, uh, uh, low cost interventions to develop different corrective measures. This test encourages the working team. If it was both uh, like uh, less than this one, uh, so we, we cannot you know able to develop this manual from technical point of view. So. Yeah, this, uh, the test was done in the uh, Trivan University, IOE lab So, uh, that's, this, that, that part, part B was uh, around uh, unit test and wallet test for the design and the design and corrective measures developed. Uh, from the structural point of view, if the SU was used in the building, we, we, we found that the building while working, uh, you know, the buildings were uh, resisting loads in three different ways. The first one is reinforced masonry. Uh, reinforced masonry. Second was confined masonry. The confining way is resisting the load. Other is reinforced uh, like a moment resisting frame. So we we our interest is this one. Like we rarely found the confined masonry. However, there's a um, guideline of the designs, like in the design catalog volume two, regarding the confined machine using HCD mass, HCD block, and other things. This manual, uh, 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 this manual, uh, whole manual work focus on this type of building typology. 
the river reinforced uh, the reinforcement river may be uh, this kind of polar section or single single bar like other other structures. So this uh, the river the size or the or the size or uh, the uh, I mean river can be uh, in any form like a hollow uh, hollow steel section or solid cell. River like 12 mm or 16 mm, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, it does not affect the building performance if the quantity, like the quantity of the steel is okay in particular critical section. So, uh, uh, having that idea, the there's instruction manual for this kind of building. There is a specific uh, instruction form which include which. Uh, be incorporated in the end of this manual. So others are already there in the NRA. We just categorize this, this switch, this building, other forms switch in this building. So we just categorize. Uh, the level of inspection is same here in SCD building as building, like other buildings. So first plants up to here, second here, and other is here. Yeah. Commission certificate. So part three, more technical uh, specification like uh, what is the minimum requirement for SCV load bearing structures? This may be the focus on. Uh, these are like nine things, like other, in other, these are similar in other buildings as well. We, we, we look after the, the, these nine things. So, one by one, the, for the site selection, the minimum requirements like the same in the like other building typology. Only the difference is clear span of the wall, like this wall. In other structures, it goes for like 4.5 meter. In this SCV, where the SCV uh, list dimension is 150 mm, so this one is 4.0. The difference is this. Others are same. Uh, and other one is uh, other load bearing structures can go for three story for this building SCV. Cannot go above two story. This inspection form cannot use for three story SCV building. So. There is a low three-story buildings in the field, so it limits two-story. If there is a case of three buildings, then it will uh, the file will look out looked by district support engineers. Uh, the others are same. Uh, uh, so uh, one by one, uh, I'm not going in detail like this is the inspection form. Other interesting thing uh, this manual has is uh, the quality assurance or the quality checks in the construction site, the, the built, stru built structures. Uh, block can be manual made or machine made, beneficiaries can uh, freedom to choose any of these. So mostly the manual made are used in the field. So to ensure the quality, there are three different uh, tests. Uh, Non-destructive tests like a drop test, uh, it's the same with destructive tests, visual test, and cutting test. So, if you take a block and drop from like a, from this side, it's around uh, 1.5 meter, drop a five blocks in a hard surface, it could be concrete hard surface. If uh, the results are mixed like if the results are like this, then it's okay or the you can accept or reject. For the uh, for the completed building is uh, this. Uh, for the completed building, we cannot you know, ensure the quality of the build constructed building having tested this like this. So we have different approaches, uh, like this one. If you uh, you can press this corner, like remove the plaster and press the block edge. The if the blocks are uh, if the blocks are if no, uh, you have to ensure that there's a no column in the end of this uh, building. So the blocks are easily pressed, then the block used in the building are of poor quality. If it's okay, uh, if, uh, if the blocks are not you know, easily pressable, then the block used in the buildings are okay. This one you know, gives you some idea of the quality of the block used in this building. Other one is a uh, uh, cutting test. If you have a, if you can take the block on top of the wall, 
if the uh, penicillin is okay with this, then you can take the blood and you do the test. This this test, like uh, you cut this whole area, whole part in the middle, and uh, if the blood uh, cuts in two identical pieces, then the blood used in the building are all of good quality. If not, then the quality is poor. So this the uh, three different idea that you can ensure the quality of the blood in used in the building. That's the third one. It's other are corrective measures. If the blocks are the block uh, quality of blood used in the buildings are of good quality, then you can see the uh, seismic binding is okay or not. If the missing, you can provide, you can suggest pro, uh, for strengthening part. Like uh, if there is a no binding or the reinforcement around the opening, we can provide from X uh, outer part of the wall. If there is a no horizontal binding, we can put in the, uh, from out, out, outside of the wall or other things there. So these are same as the exception correction manual already in the uh, described is same is similar of that. So in a brief, like uh, regarding the major non-compliant issues, if we, we can we can imagine four cases. Like case one, the quantity of the blood is okay and system band is provided, then no mitigation is, is obviously no mitigation is okay. Case two, blocks units quality are okay, the system band are not provided, then obviously there comes to mitigation. The mitigation is of low, uh, less costing. It's like a spring and bandage. These two cases, like the blocks used are of uh, poor quality. Again, bandings are missing. This uh, uh, the mitigation is uh, needed. The kind of uh, the, the type of mitigation could be jacketing whole building where. The, 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 some of the work of uh, blood can be, you know, can be transferred to the steel bar and the uh, plaster work. So it costs a bit more compared to other uh, intervention. The last case could be the blood has no quality requirement of, and the banding is provided. So this kind of building, like if there's a banding, bandage around the building, the block are less quality. We can uh, we can select a specific panel of the wall where the critical loading is coming. So we can do like jacketing in a specific panel and hold the building. So it reduces the cost and the safety maintain, maintaining the safety. Uh, the question is how we ensure the quality of block. So there are some practices in different districts. The beneficiaries has already the certification from the manufacturers that manufacturers show the show the of this uh, strength called block. So you can ask for the certificate from the manufacturer, or we can do uh, like uh, chapter four, the visual test, drop test, cutting test, uh, and so on. So these some uh, uh, sketches for opening like. You can imagine here is the opening. So if there is a no reinforcement, we can provide vertical reinforcement from outside and uh, vertical ski hooks are on, and the plaster is um PTN both sides. Somewhere you can tie these two things. Other are in, in a, this is the sectional view, like uh, band is band is uh, the hollow part you can fill with the uh, motor where the banding is running from outside of the wall like this if the band, original banding is missing other is uh, like construction process is similar in the different kind of retro fitting uh, sessions, uh, sessions. We, we, we prepare the surface like remove the non-structural element we call it uh, here is a plaster so remove the plaster Put the reinforcement where it is designed, and uh, in, from outside the wall and inside the wall. So link with uh, tie this out this layer outside and inside, uh, and then do the plaster and curing. So if there is a vertical reinforcement missing, so same process 
again depends, but it's in a particular manner. In a plant, you can see this uh, pad outside. Uh, this cushion, is it required only outside or inside? Depends on the design. If the blocks are okay, the man according to manual, outside is okay. Only the outside is fine. Uh, so the construction again removed from the plaster. If there is uh, no uh, foundation or the foundation is not uh, of required quantity, you can provide the foundation as well. We have to put the particular bar and other things. So again, we, we, we tie the inner and outer side bar or the bar with the existing wall and uh, again plaster, again cure. So this is how we do the, uh, the uh, this is how we do the uh, uh, provisional uh, vertical or horizontal binding in the existing building. So, uh, like this one is the building has the building constructed with a very poor block. So we will do the, this kind of intervention in the whole building. So it costs a little more. Uh, like ground floor masonry. First floor is a light structure. It could be deeper or steel. Again, we have to do the checking like this. Uh, last uh, part is ready to use designs. So we selected non-compliant building and the, the, the design, the, this part has uh, what is the intervention for that specific non-compliant issues. So this, if the wall is, if the building has no horizontal bank and uh, the wall, the clearing of the wall is less than 4.05, we can provide this, uh, this sort of band with this reinforcement horizontally. So for the vertical one, if the building is uh, two story, let's say, and the, for, for the T-junction, like T-junction, T-junction or the corner or the opening, we can provide this, this, this quantity of uh, reinforcement with the, the size of concrete. The reinforcement, number of reinforcement in one junction, mm -hmm. the diameter of the used bar and concreting is this one. Thickness 20 mm, like this. For the three story, it's again design basis, not an inspection basis. It's all we can say is inspection basis. Uh, for the new buildings, if 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 uh, inspector found different building typology that uh, surveyed uh, other than surveyed in this manual, so they can go for the National Building Code 2002 and compare the reinforcement and other structural elements uh, and give the suggestion accordingly. Like this one is uh, copied from the uh, Nepal Building Code for the new one. Where so other NHS, uh, so other NX part. Uh, there is a uh, other NX part. We can read it from the manual because uh, it's a bit lengthy and uh, so. Uh, for this presentation, I, uh, I have incorporated this much information from this manual. If you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you.